cataractcoach.com. Small opacities behind the lens capsule. So what are all these numerous small opacities, and what do you do about it? I'm going to show you a complete cataract case. This is me operating routine cataract here, setting up our speculum, getting the eye in position. You can see the dilation is probably about four and a half, five millimeters, pretty reasonable. We'll make our paracentesis here. Now, this patient has a pretty reasonable cataract, probably two to three plus nuclear sclerosis. I'm instilling some anesthetic here. This is just some lidocaine, trying to get it under the pupil in order to expand it a little bit more. And that looks pretty good. And what's going to be different in this case is, in this case, we're going to see some opacities behind the posterior capsule. I'll show you what I mean there. So doing some viscomedrisis, we're going to get that pupil slightly more expanded. There's a good, pretty good red reflex right there. And maybe that pupil's about five, maybe even for lucky five and a half millimeters, temporarily until we lose viscoelastic. And now putting the fixation ring down using a diamond keratome, let's make that main incision. That looks pretty reasonable. Let me get a little bit better approach, a little bit of movement on the patient. And then, okay, I like the incision. Let's get that eye centered up again. And let's get our rexes going here. So we're gonna make the rexes, as you already know, right up against the pupil margin. So that, yeah, the pupil's just, just slightly above five millimeters. You can see I measured there with my forceps. So I'm gonna make this rexus right about at the pupil margin. And that should give us a slightly larger than five millimeter capsular rexus. And so this patient doesn't have any history of trauma that he can recall. So the rest of the case should be pretty reasonable. But what I want to show you is that in this case, you know, the barrier between the anterior segment of the eye and the posterior segment of the eye is not all that strong, right? We know it's the posterior capsule, and we see that. But it's also the zonular support. And so with the zonular support, if there are gapes or holes or, you know, spaces in between the zonular attachments, you can actually get pieces of cataract going behind there. Because you just think we're removing these big pieces of cataract, but think about it. Using that ultrasound in there in the eye, we're going to blast this cataract into an emulsion, right? Phaco emulsification. So it's not taking down big chunks of nucleus. It's literally emulsifying it into really tiny microscopic fragments. And some of these, during the flow in the eye, the, the wash, the BSS irrigation, that can be pushed through the zonular support, especially if there are areas of zonular weakness or laxity or prior trauma, which this patient did not have. And then you can get little tiny pieces or fragments of lens material in the anterior hyaloid face behind the posterior capsule. Let me show you that. So I want to continue removing this nucleus here. You can see it's got a reasonable density. I've kind of prolapsed partially up out of the bag. A um, little bit of a struggle here to get those pieces where I want them, but that's okay. Can't show you cherry-picked cases. I got to show you the real world, right? So this is a case that's going to take just a pinch longer. It looks like about six and a half minutes for the case instead of the normal five or so. But again, not a horse race. I don't mind if it takes 10 minutes or 15 minutes. I just want a beautiful job. So taking that last hemonuclear piece, getting it up, there it is, finally getting it to where I want it. Now, I didn't sense any issues with zonulaxy during the case. The AC seemed pretty stable, other than maybe a little bit of floppy iris here. But again, even that wasn't too bad. So taking all these things down looks pretty good. There's just some cortex there now. And after we remove the cortex, then we're going to be able to see, all right, this is where we have these pieces of lens material, tiny now, I don't recommend going after them. They're going to go dissolve on their own in the inflammatory cascade of, of inflammation, right? And so let's remove the cortex, and then we'll take a good look back there, and you'll see that in the anterior hyaloid face, we're going to have a little bit of lens material. And again, it's not going to affect the outcome of the case. Maybe there'll be a little more inflammation post-op. So this is a case where I'd, I'd say, yeah, let's put a little extra steroid, maybe put some triamcinolone in the anterior chamber at the end of the case. And now looking back, that I can see it. I'm looking, I'm kind of pausing. I said, all right, let's put some viscoelastic there. Look at those little flecks of pepper, like pepper flakes. And I'll fill the bag with our viscoelastic, and you can look back there, and those pieces are a little bit mobile. They're literally resting in the anterior hyaloid face. So they're between the anterior hyaloid face and the back surface of the posterior capsule. But regardless, let's put the lens in the capsule bag. Nice and easy. Here comes our IOL. And let's get that delivered and, and, and placed securely within the capsule bag. And again, I've sensed no zonal weakness during this case. 
So there's just some permeability of that zonular support. And that's why when we had the infusion pressure in the eye, we had a high flow rate of 30, 40 cc's a minute, we could sometimes push some of these emulsified tiny little fragments of lens material into that space. So we're cleaning up our, our viscoelastic here. And again, looking back there, look at the little pepper flakes you see on the anterior hyaloid face behind the posterior capsule. There's really no clean way of getting those out. And I don't recommend you do either because very easily they'll resolve in that inflammatory cascade. See, look at all those particles. It looks like a lot initially. So you say, wait a minute, there are a lot of particles there. But again, this is the variation in patient anatomy. Every patient's got a little bit different protoplasm. No two patients are identical. Hey, look at that surprise. Maybe we should get that out. What do you think? Yeah, why not? So under the iris, you had a little bit of a lens material, lens fragment. We just washed it out of the eye now. But that's also another reason why I like to do that sweep inside the eye, the angle sweep. You've seen me do it before. You'll sometimes be surprised, but you may leave behind if you don't do that. So again, here, sealing up the incision the right way, a mild amount of hydration on the roof, and then um, now again, this angle sweep, and that looks good. And the pieces there of the tiny lens material, those little pepper flakes, we're going to leave them alone. Instead, we'll just put a little bit of triamcinol in the AC here, and this patient will have a nice, normal post-operative course. So next time you see this, now you'll know exactly what it is. Those are little tiny bits of lens fragment in the anterior hyaloid space just behind the back surface of the posterior capsule.